Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Bernice gets home early because the weather is not very good and school is let out. She and Ethan walk home from the bus, and Ethan invites her over to play Lego sometimes. When Bernice arrives home, she wonders why she cannot smell any cookies baking and asks Papa Bear if they are having a different kind of snack that day. Bernice makes dumplings. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Bernice's boots make a loud noise as she walks down the street with Ethan after getting off the school bus. Isn't it cool how we got to go home early? Ethan said as he tried to get his boots to make the same sound as Bernice's. Yeah, I guess so, but I really wanted to eat more snacks this afternoon after lunch. And we are missing art class, and that's not fair. That's true, but guess what? Ethan said. Not waiting for an answer, he continued. I now get to play Lego this afternoon, and I am making a super large castle, and... Maybe dragons and knights will go with it. Stopping in front of her small house, Bernice said, That sounds like a lot of fun. I don't play Lego much. I don't know why, but maybe someday we could collaborate or something. Sure, you can come over anytime you want to play Lego. I'm sure my grandma wouldn't mind, Ethan said as he waved goodbye. See you tomorrow, Bernice. See you later. Bernice yelled as she walked up the steps of her small house and opened the front door. Hi, Papa and Cookie. I'm home, Bernice said, quickly closing the door to not let all the warm air escape. Papa, how come I don't smell any cookies today? Are we having a different snack? She said as she sat down to take off her snow boots. It's super duper warm outside. You are home early, little bear. I haven't had the chance to put the cookies in the oven yet. When you have taken off your outside clothes, come into the kitchen and you can help me, Papa Bear said in his deep voice. As Bernice struggled to take off her stubborn snow boots, Cookie came running around the corner to greet her. Hi, Cookie. I'm happy you came to greet me from your new hiding place. You are a super good hider, and I haven't found your new spot yet. Cookie purred as Bernice pet her. Cookie's fur was really soft. Did you miss me today? I missed you very, very much. I would give you a great big hug, but I know you don't like being squeezed, so I'll just give you some more pets. Cookie purred even louder. After she pet Cookie, Bernice removed the rest of her outside clothes and hung them up in the closet. Running into the kitchen, she said, Are you surprised to see me home so early, Papa? I think Cookie was. Maybe I should have come into the house sneakily and scared you with a big roar. A big roar would be scary. I might think that Cookie had a tiger friend visiting, Papa Bear said laughing. I knew you were coming home, Little Bear. The weather is supposed to change, and the roads might not be very safe to drive on. So the school likes to make sure the kids get home safe. But it's sunny and warm right now, Papa. It's perfect weather to go outside and play. That's sometimes the way it goes. It's hard to predict the weather. But it's supposed to rain and then get very cold, so that makes driving dangerous. We have been having some crazy weather this winter so far, Papa Bear said, as he put some finishing touches to a tray of cookies. It has been super crazy, Papa. Ethan and I walked together for a bit, and he said he thought it was cool to have the extra time off because he wanted to go to his grandma's house and make a castle out of Lego. But I am kind of sad to miss art class, because we were going to make some fun stuff. Oh, and he invited me to come over anytime I want. Is that okay, Papa? 
We would have to check with his parents first, but it's fine with us for you to play with friends after school. Well, I might come home first and get some cookies, Bernice said laughing. You could take some with you to share. I've just put some cookies into the oven. Why don't you wash your hands and have a seat at the table? I'll get you a glass of milk, and when the cookies are ready, we can eat them when they are still warm. After she washed her hands, Bernice first had a glass of water. She was very thirsty. Those cookies in the oven smell super yummy already, and I think my stomach is starting to make gurgling noises. I hope they are ready soon. It's really fun to eat chocolate chip cookies when the chips are still warm and gooey. They will be ready soon. Good things come to those who wait. Now, why don't you tell me about your day, little bear? What was too bad was that today at school, we were learning about the lunar holiday. And in art class, we were supposed to make some decorations. I'm not sure we will still have time now, Papa. But we did do something cool before lunch. What was that? Papa Bear asked as he got up to look at the cookies in the oven to make sure they didn't burn. Because it's the lunar holiday, one of our teachers took our class into the classroom with the kitchen in it and taught us how to make dumplings. It was super fun. But we had to wash our hands and wear special plastic gloves for sanitary reasons. Then after we were done, we washed our hands again. Bobby got in trouble because he wiped his nose with his hand and then he made a dumpling. He wasn't allowed to make them anymore, but he didn't mind too much because after we made them, he still got to eat some. They were super yummy. I think I love dumplings. I love dumplings too, Little Bear, but I don't think I have ever made them. Maybe you can teach me how sometime. Yeah, okay. I think with some practice, I will be an expert. But you have to be super careful because the thin skin that is made out of flour kind of looks like your thin cookies, but they are super elastic and are easy to break. After you fill them with stuff, you have to close them by pressing the edges together. I think only half of what the class made turned out, but the teacher was pretty happy, I think. But what Bobby didn't know was that the filling in the dumplings had carrots in them. The teacher said that the filling of the dumplings she makes at home has a mixture of minced meat and finely chopped vegetables. This time, it was just vegetables, cabbage, chives, and carrots. After Bobby found out, He started making pretend fart noises because he thinks carrots cause farts. Oh, that Bobby, Papa Bear said with a sigh. So, what are you going to do for the rest of the afternoon, Papa Bear asked. After I eat your delicious cookies, I think I will look for Cookie's secret hiding place again. I haven't found it yet. Then I will read a book. Do you want to help me later to make a salad for dinner? Sure, Papa. I'm a good helper, I think. It's that time, Papa, said Bernice. And what time is that, little bear? Papa Bear replied. The time you tell me a story. And remember, you promised me a Boo Boo and Kai Kai story. I haven't forgotten... But are you sure you can stay awake? Papa Bear asked. I think so, Papa, Bernice said with a great big yawn. Did you do all the things you need to do before bed? I had a soapy bath, put on my warm pajamas, brushed my teeth, and even did some stretches. Did you put your stinky socks in the laundry? My socks aren't stinky, but I did put them away. Are you comfy? Yes, Papa. How about Twiggo, Wolfie, and Madeline? Are they ready for the story too? They say they are ready, and Cookie looks ready too. Okay, 
Give me a hug and a kiss, and I'll tell you a short story. Thank you, Papa. Once upon a time, in a world full of magic and fun, there lived a brave little bear named Boo Boo. She lived in a large castle at the edge of a mystical forest. And in this forest, there were unicorns, fairies, gnomes, and all manner of insects, birds, and animals. It was a wonderful place. Her best friend was a young dragon called Kai Kai, and they liked to play as much as they could. The kingdom they lived in was full of people who lived in the meadows, those who lived in the hills, and those that lived in the forest. And they all lived in harmony. On this day, Boo Boo and Kai Kai were meeting at Boo Boo's castle garden so that they could attend a celebration together. It was a celebration by one of the dragon clans, and because it involved lots of food, Kai Kai was very excited. Hurry, Boo Boo, hop on my back. We don't want to be late. My cousin is going, and if she gets there before us, there will be no food left. I'm going as fast as I can, Kai Kai, Boo Boo said as she climbed on Kai Kai's back. They will save some food for you. You don't need to worry. Yes, but my cousin likes the same things that I do, and I know she will eat all the triple chocolate. Oh, Kai Kai, you and your stomach, Boo Boo giggled as she settled on Kai Kai's back. Let's go quickly so you can have your triple chocolate. With a gentle flap of his wings, Kai Kai lifted into the air, soaring above the castle, the garden, and the tops of the trees in the mystical forest. The wind whistled past them, and Boo Boo laughed. It was always fun to fly with Kai Kai. Below them, the mystical forest was alive with color and movement. Unicorns pranced in the meadows, and fairies danced among the flowers. Kai Kai flew extra fast, and with Boo Boo hanging on tight, they soon arrived at the dragon celebration. It was a wonderful sight. Dragons of all colors and sizes, and from many different clans were gathered. Some were breathing colorful flames that lit up the sky like fireworks. The smell of delicious food filled the air, making Boo Boo's mouth water and Kai Kai's stomach grumble. Kai Kai landed gracefully and they hurried to the feast. There were mountains of fruit, towers of cakes, and to Kai Kai's delight, a whole section of triple chocolate treats. Cousin, Kai Kai called out, spotting her near the chocolate. She waved at them, a big chocolatey smile on her face. I saved some for you, Kai Kai, she shouted over the music. I know how much you love it. Kai Kai beamed and thanked his cousin. Then he filled his supersized bowl and Boo Boo filled her plate with yummy food and found a spot to sit and enjoy the feast. This almost beats visiting a grove of chocolate trees, Kai Kai said, his mouth full of triple chocolate. I don't really know much about this celebration, Kai Kai. Does the clan just hold this feast for a chance to eat and have fun? Well, that's my favorite part, Kai Kai said with a laugh. But the celebration is not just about fun and feasting. It's a time for all dragons and creatures of the kingdom to come together in harmony and friendship. It reinforces the unity and peace of the kingdom and celebrates all our differences. Of course, it wouldn't be the same without the triple chocolate. Haha, <laughs> it certainly is tasty. As Boo Boo and Kai Kai continued to eat, they talked and laughed with the other dragons and creatures who came to say hello. After they had eaten, the music started, 
and everyone began to dance. Boo Boo and Kai Kai stayed to watch. Boo Boo was a bit shy to dance, and Kai Kai was scared he would fall and knock over the tables of food. Boo Boo thought it was the best party she had ever been to. As the party ended, Boo Boo and Kai Kai said their goodbyes and flew back to the castle, their stomachs full of chocolate treats. That was a lot of fun, Boo Boo said as they landed softly in the garden. It sure was, agreed Kai Kai, and I got to eat triple chocolate. And with that, Papa Bear gave Bernice a kiss on her forehead, adjusted her blanket, turned off her lamp, and quietly whispered, I love you, little bear. And that is the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.